Hello, my name is David Jeeves. I am a qualified civil and structural engineer and have been providing technical support for structural bridge design for many years. These tutorial sessions are short videos that are intended to cover the most common questions raised in using the software. This is the first in a series of three videos dealing with influenced lines and surfaces that are created and used by Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. The purpose of this video is to provide a basic background to the theory used by the software which eventually leads to traffic load optimization for bridge decks. So, what is an influence diagram? Well, it's a diagram that describes the effect at a particular point in the structure due to a unit point load being applied anywhere on the structure in a certain direction. The effect may be any design detail, such as a moment, force, a displacement, reaction or even a stress. An influence diagram provides a useful tool when analysing structures that have variable actions that vary in both location and intensity. A bridge deck that is subject to moving traffic loads falls into this category. So, if we model a two-span continuous beam and consider the flexural moment at a particular location due to the application of a unit point load at another location, we can plot the moment magnitude at this point at the location of the applied load. This process can be repeated for additional locations until we have enough points to draw a curve between them. And this curve is known as an influence line. This basic theory can be applied not just to a line beam but to a complete loaded surface, such as a bridge deck. Consider a grillage of beams representing the surface of a two-span bridge deck. We can apply a series of point loads, as we did in the line beam, and plot the moment value at the blue dot as ordinates above the applied load. And we can do this until there are enough points to define the surface. And this then is known as an influence surface. So what is so special about influence diagrams? Well, influence diagrams are extremely useful if we need to determine the effect of a specific set of loads which are not in a constant position, but move across and along a structure. They provide us with a tool that will enable us to calculate the design effect very quickly and efficiently. For example, let's consider a two-span line beam where an influence line has been constructed for bending at the purple dot, as we did previously. Then consider a truck with three different axle weights and positions as it moves along the deck. At any particular position of the truck, the ordinates of the influence diagram at the actual locations are easily obtained. Then a simple expression can be used to determine the design effect value M at the purple dot due to the complete truck load. By incrementally moving the truck along the deck and carrying out the same calculation, we can easily determine the position and value of the most adverse design effect. Uniformly distributed loads can be dealt with in a similar manner where we can vary the start and end location of the UDL. In this case, the design moment is calculated by multiplying the load intensity of the UDL by the area under the influence diagram over the length of the applied load. So in conclusion, any pattern of UDL and axial loads can be applied to this structure and by simple multiplication and addition, the design effects can be calculated without having to carry out a full structural analysis for each case. I hope you found this short video helpful. The second video in this series covers a more detailed description of how to create influence diagrams using two different methods. There is also a demonstration of how this is used in ASBD. 
Thank you for your time and please leave any comments attached to the video or by emailing me using support at davidjeeves.co.uk.